Hi, I'm Linda Shenton Matchett, author, speaker, and history geek. Thanks for joining me on Moments in History. As you can tell by my get up today, I'm going to be talking about World War II associated stories. Research is one of my favorite aspects of writing, but for many reasons, lots of the information that I unearth isn't able to make it into my book. So I've created this channel so I can share with you these pieces of information. And today I'm going to talk to you about William Patrick Stewart Houston. Never heard of him? You might recognize his name if I gave you the name in which he was born, William Patrick Hitler. William was born on March 12, 1911 to Adolf Hitler's half-brother Alois and his Irish wife, British Dowling, in Liverpool, England. That makes him the half-nephew to the Fuhrer. His parents met in Dublin when his father was living there during 1909. They married in Marleybone, London, and then relocated back to Liverpool. The family lived in a flat at 102 Upper Stanhope Street, which would later be uh, destroyed during the last German air raid of the Liverpool Blitz in January of 1942. In 1914, his father left his mother and his son for a gambling tour of Europe and then returned to Germany. Unable to rejoin them due to the outbreak of World War I, his father abandoned the family, leaving William to be brought up by his mother. He remarried bigamously, but during the mid-1920s, he wrote to Bridget and asked her to send William to Germany's Weimar Republic for a visit. She finally agreed in 1929 when William was 18. That year, William traveled to Germany and reconnected with his father, who took him to a Nazi rally where he saw his uncle Adolf, leader of the rising National Socialist Party. William visited Germany again in 1930, this time meeting his uncle in person and receiving an autograph photograph from him. After he returned to England, William published some articles about his uncle, but the Nazi leaders reportedly didn't like the way the articles portrayed him. Calling William to Berlin, Hitler supposedly ordered him to retract the articles and claimed he would kill himself if William ever published anything again about his personal life. The articles brought William's relationship with Adolf out, and William soon became persona non grata in England. He was fired from his job in 1932 and unable to find work. So he decided to return to Germany to see if his influential uncle could be persuaded to help him. His uncle found him a job at the Reich's Credit Bank in Berlin, a job he held for most of the 1930s. Later, he worked at an Opel automobile factory. But after only a year there, he was suspended from his job. Turns out his uncle had revoked his work permit. Angry, William went to the chancellery in Berlin to find out why. After two months of waiting, he was told that two of Hitler's personal aides had accused him of stealing automobiles and selling them on the side. After much discussion, the accusations were dropped and he went back to work. Now, there are two versions of what happened next. The first version states that after the Opel incident, Life got different. His comings and goings were under scrutiny, and later he would say he couldn't go out with, without risking a summons to Hitler. After a particularly frightening meeting with a raging bullwhip cracking Hitler in 1936, William decided it was time to leave Germany. The second version reports that in 1938, Adolf asked William to relinquish his British citizenship in exchange for a high-ranking job. Expecting a trap, William fled Nazi Germany, but allegedly tried to blackmail his uncle with threats. He threatened to tell the press that Hitler's alleged paternal grandfather was actually a Jewish merchant. He returned to England and attempted to join the British Armed Forces. However, he was rejected because of his direct relation to Adolf Hitler. In 1939, the newspaper magnate William Randolph Hearst brought William and his mother to the United States for a lecture tour, and shortly thereafter, he wrote an article for the July 4th, 1939 edition of Look magazine titled, Why I Hate My Uncle. Now here is a flyer 
for the lecture series. And this is the article from Look Magazine. When World War II began, William and his mother were stranded in the U.S. After making a special request to President Roosevelt, William was eventually approved to jo join the United States Navy in 1944, where he served as a pharmacist's mate, a designation later changed to hospital corpsman, until he was discharged in 1947. He was wounded in action during the war and was awarded a Purple Heart. After being discharged from the Navy, William Hitler changed his surname to Stuart Houston and married Phyllis Jean Jacques, who had been born in Germany in the mid-1920s. Along with Bridget, they tried to live a life of anonymity in the United States and moved to Pawchog, Long Island, where William used his medical training to establish a business that analyzed blood samples from hospitals. His lab, which was called Brookhaven, was located in his home. He and his wife had four sons, Alexander Adolph, born in 1949, Louis in 1951, Howard Ronald in 1957, and Brian William in 1965, none of whom were married or had children of their own. Contrary to popular speculation, the boys did not have a pact to intentionally end the Hitler bloodline. William Stewart Houston died in, in July of 1987, and his wife outlived him for many years, finally passing away in 2004. Speculation abounds about William and his motives, many believing his new name was a reference to Houston Stewart Chamberlain, who was a Jewish, excuse me, a German philosopher and one of Adolf Hitler's role models. Did William hold secret Nazi leanings? or was he simply an opportunist who tried to manipulate his circumstances to get ahead? Perhaps none of the above. You decide. Thank you for watching today's episode of Moments in History. If you enjoyed watching, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. You'll want to click the bell icon to be notified when I upload an installment, which is generally done on the second and fourth Fridays of each month. You can find me across social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And if you want even more history, please stop by my blog that's located on my website at www.lindashentonmatchett.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Moments in History.